läuft. Uh. Oh, it's live, John. Uh, test, 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 test. So, back up the ladder into this well box and uh, we're going to start by tuning the oboe. And I showed this in an earlier video a few months back, um, one of the videos that was only in German. I hadn't started doing the English language ones yet. Um, so, if you want to go and watch that, feel free. It's all in German, but it's good for your German language skills. Um, today we're going to do, I'm not going to show you how to tune every pipe, but a slight difference. Last time I was here, I had a 17 millimeter spanner that I was using to do this. And today I have actually got a proper uh, a, a tuning iron again. What's a, it's made of brass, as you can see. And it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of equipment and you need it to tune uh, these pipes properly. On the edge of the little things here, we've got a hook where you can tune it flat or you can bang it on the top to tune it sharp. So um, what we're going to do, we're just going to let the camera roll and I'm going to tune the whole oboe through and then we'll do a fast forward on it. And then we're going to move on to tuning the trumpet and then the trombone. So, Kabelsalat, nimmst du auf? Ja. Eh, was ist das? Good afternoon. We've done it. We've reached 10,000 subscribers. <sighs> Thank you. I never thought that was going to be possible, and I certainly never thought it was going to be possible this quickly. A few months ago, I said, yeah. When we get 10,000, then I'll sit down and play Takata and Fugue for you. And if we get 10,000 by the end of May, then I'll sit down and play it in my kilt. Well, it's not even Easter 2019, and we're already over 10,000. We're practically 11,000 already. It's unbelievable. Um, I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. Who would have thought that a little channel on organs and organ music would have become so popular around the world? I hope this continues. Let's make something out of this. I really look forward to this. Um, and uh, while we're on that subject, I would also like to say thank you to the sponsors and supporters uh, in the last week. We've had a couple of new Patreons there. We've had a couple of new people on Steady. And there have been some PayPal donations. Uh, please, anything you want to donate towards the channel will be reinvested into the channel. So thank you in advance. You know, if you want to, if you want to pick one of the three options, you'll find them below in the description. Um, any donation at all, however small, however large, is more than welcome and will be invested in the channel. Um, I'm working on a sort of microphone setup at the moment and I've tried a few different things out in a few different churches in a few different positions and I'm getting there. Now microphones are expensive toys and we've got a couple of ideas. Now obviously the, the, the best microphones in the world to pick up sort of choir music in church acoustics, they cost 4,000 euros. Well, not each, for two, the 2,000 euros each. And that, that is a lot of money, and there is no way that's going to happen in the near future. Absolutely no way. Maybe in 10 or 20 years or something when, we've, you know, when we really take off with this sort of thing. So at the moment, I'm looking for a slightly more, um, 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 slightly more comfortable uh, options, at least financially comfortable options. Um, and I've got a couple of things in mind that I think would definitely fit the bill, and they certainly don't cost 2,000 euros each. They're not far off it, but they're certainly not that much. No, 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 not at all. Um, so, yeah, thank you for all donations to the channel, and it's all going back into the channel. Now, before we get on to this week's subject, which will once again be our Toccata and Fugue, there is, of course, some rather sad news in the organ world. Um, I think probably most of you will have heard by now that a couple of nights ago there was a massive fire in the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And a lot of the church is completely destroyed. Mercifully, the interior of the church seems to be largely untouched so far. Um, but of course, the firefighters pumped in a hell of a lot of water to um, keep the flames at bay. The entire roof structure seems to be gone, but inside the church, they seem to have been quite lucky. Now, in the organ world, there are, of course, an awful lot of uh, worries being passed around. What will happen with the, the grand organ of Notre Dame? Well, don't forget there are two organs in Notre Dame. There's the big organ, which is stuck at the west end with that lovely rose window around it. And at the front of the church, near the altar, there's the choir organ. Now, good news and bad news. Mercifully, the grand orgue, 
seems to have been untouched by the flames and certainly by the water that was pumped into the church. Um, it was, of course, affected by all the smoke and all the soot that was flying around. So it is, of course, in a completely unplayable uh, condition. Obviously, it's unplayable because the church is dangerously, uh, it, dangerously close to falling down. So what's happening is the organ is going to be removed from the church as soon as they can, put into storage, cleaned, restored, ready then for reinstallation one day when the church has been rebuilt. Now, this is going to take years. Uh, I think the French president said he thinks it's going to take five years. No, I think it's going to take a lot longer than that. Um, that's just my personal opinion, so let's wait and see. So that's maybe the good news part of it. The Grand Org has kind of been saved, kind of. Not so for the choir organ down at the front of the church. Now, because of, the, of all of the antiques and the, the valuables, basically, that are found in the church, including things like the old um, the wooden the wooden church banks and things, they, they've, they are, they're worth millions and they're irreplaceable. So the firefighters had simple instructions. First of all, you save the things inside the church and then we'll work out the rest of it. So they pumped millions of litres of water into the church to try to save as much as they possibly could. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the choir organ got most of that water because of its position in the church. It is absolutely ruined. It will never play again, which is really bad news for the choir organists, Jonathan and Eve, um, who are basically out of a job at the moment. I don't know when they're going to get their job back. A um, bit sad news for them. The other organists, the other three with the, uh, the Grand Org, they will one day once again have their organ back. But the guys up front who use that organ every day for everyday services, they will never play that organ again in that position in that church. They will have a new instrument, I dare say, one day, but it's going to be something completely different. So that, unfortunately, is the sad news. And uh, all best wishes to my French colleagues. I know most of the organists in Notre Dame personally, and some of them are rather good friends. And it's, uh, it's of course, a very sad week for them. And um, all the best for the coming weeks and months and, sadly, years. A lot of people out there, conspiracy theorists, you may call them, don't think that this is actually from Bach. And there's a lot of sort of there's a lot of news out there. Well, who did write it then? And um, the internet is full of this kind of thing. And uh, actually, so is the uh, professional literature world as well. A lot of people aren't too sure where this came from. It definitely comes from the time of Bach. But was it written by a young Bach? Was it written by an old Bach? Was it written by someone else entirely and Bach just wrote it down himself? Was it maybe an improvisation that he had heard or played himself and then wrote down later? Well, obviously, we don't really know because none of us were there. And time travel hasn't been invented yet, so we can't really go and find out. But whoever came up with this wonderful piece of music must have been a bit of a genius because there was nothing like it up to this point, And it took a long time before anything like it ever came again. Let's find out why. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at parts of the fugue that I have been frantically practicing in the last couple of weeks. Um, we're not going to look at the fugue again today. We're going to look at the toccata. And the toccata starts with perhaps the most famous sound in music. And those three notes, I personally think, are more famous than Beethoven's fifth. I think if you had a top ten of classical openings, or musical openings, I think we're going to have to put... You're going to have to put things like that in there as well, aren't you? Yeah, but top ten musical openings anywhere in music. I think you're going to have Toccata and Fugue in D minor right at the top. Now, why is that? Why is this piece so popular? Maybe you have some kind of memory about this piece. Sometime you've heard it or you've played it yourself. There's something about this piece that's rather magical for you. Let me know why. Um, I think it's a magical piece as well, but, but why do you think it's a magical piece? That would be kind of interesting to know. So, comments below in the usual place. Now, what is this Toccata? I think we'd better have a quick look at it in more detail. Um, may I present to you the music of Toccata and Fugue in D minor? And the opening two bars, everybody knows the two, first two or three bars, but have you noticed this before? It starts with an eighth note, then you have some 
64th notes, then a 32nd, then a 16th, then another 8th, then some 30 seconds, and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. Did you know that? A lot of people just sort of play the first notes and then play something. The hope that it kind of gets there. There are millions of interpretations of this piece of music out there, okay? And I'm not going to start criticizing other players and things, but you know, just be aware, if you're going to learn this piece yourself, that, that those notes do have different lengths, okay? Please be aware of that when you're playing it. So let's try that again and see what happens. comes the big pedal note. But before we do that, let's have a quick word about the registration of this. Now, again, a lot of interpreters out there play it in a different way. They think, yes, you should have the full organ. Yes, you should have 16 foot stops on as well. Now, my question then to the composer would be, well, why have you written it in octaves? I don't add a 16 foot when I play that in the manuals, just because I think it muddies the sound up a bit too much. I like a more crisp sound. I myself am fat enough. We don't need the sound here to be fat. But that's just my interpretation. A number of critics out there will probably say it's wrong, but well, the, none of the people who composed this piece of music, whether it was Bach or someone else, told us how to registrate. So we don't know. After that comes this amazing arpeggio that everybody knows. Now we have the piece of music set. We know what's happening. It's going to be big, it's going to be majestic, it's going to be wonderful. And then we get an awful lot of, come and have a look at these notes again, triplets. Yeah? Triplet, 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 not a triplet. Triplet, 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 not a triplet. Triplet, 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 a sixteenth on its own. Did you notice there is also here, there's an upbeat to those triplets. Now, a lot of people play it like this. And you can't really hear the sort of the rhythm that's going on there. Now, I like to think that's deliberate. So there's an upbeat, and then the triplets. And the same thing an octave higher. Sounds a bit different. Now we get the famous octave bits. Please excuse the mistakes, my fingers aren't working very well today. It's crazy in the run up to Easter at the moment. Yeah, it's this non stop preparation at the moment. So please excuse any mistakes I make today. That's why. And now we get another one of these pedal things with a big diminished accord on top. But look at the music this time. <laughs> Should that there be split like that there? Why isn't it written like that? Why is it written together? Should it be played as a chord? Should it be played as an arpeggio? Who knows? Most people do play it as an arpeggio. <laughs> fingers work. Now we get to my favorite bit and I think probably everybody's favorite bit but once again how do we play it? Well I think it depends on the organ you're going to play it on. For example now if you listen very closely to what I was doing there this note that gets repeated all the time 
when it's on its own in the left hand, it speaks quite happily by itself. We'll wait till that's gone, I think. It's gone. <laughs> so this, this note that gets repeated all the time. When it's on its own like that, it's fine. But then as the right hand comes down with the melody, it has to be played with both hands at the same time. Now, some organs are going to manage to do that, and the action is going to be so fast that that will work. Now, this old wheeze box that I have here isn't actually that quick. Yeah, the note's just playing once, and all the, all the valves and things underneath the, the pipe aren't opening and closing quickly enough to let it repeat. So why not move that note to a different manual? And so on and so on. And if you've got similar sort of registrations with a mixture, then for the listener, that's quite a good effect. So I think that's the way I'm going to do it if I were going to play it on this organ. What comes next? Then we get more of our arpeggio things. A lot of people play that completely wrongly. You watch. Listen to what people do and watch what they're up to there. This is how it actually should sound. Now, then there would also be the question, should I have a dialogue between my two manuals here? Why not? And so on and so on. That's quite nice, isn't it? And then we have another one of our sort of flourishy melody bits. More of the same, those and call and response things. And then that leads us to an yet another diminished chord. And out of this diminished chord, once again, come more triplets. And so on and so on. And they move down the organ, and then they move right back up the organ, and they end on these wonderful chords. is the end of the toccata. A bit of room and then into the fugue. And so on and so on and so on. So now my job is to go home, well, wait till after Easter is over, and then practice and practice and practice, and then get this piece ready for my performance, for you. And here's the biggest question, where am I going to perform this? Now wouldn't it be great if I could find a rather cool baroque organ somewhere to really play this on. I'm going to see what I can find. I'm going to ask a few colleagues, ask around a bit, see if I can find something suitable. If not, we'll find a lovely organ in the area where we can record this for you. So, fingers crossed we'll get this done in a couple of weeks, but please bear with me. We have to get Easter out of the way first. So, as promised, we're going to play a little piece of music and we're going to dedicate it to the colleagues over in Paris. And it's from uh, Boelmann's Suite Gothique, and it's his Prière à Notre Dame, Prayer to Notre Dame.
Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. That's it for this week. Um, I hope we find the time uh, in the next coming days to film another video for next week. Easter is upon us. And uh, like I said before, I'm a bit busy over the next few days. So I hope I find time to practice our toccata and fugue a bit more. And hopefully we find time to um, film our next episode for the channel. So please bear with me. Thank you in advance. If you want to continue supporting the channel, links below to Patreon, Steady and of course PayPal. Thank you for that. And uh, yeah, have a happy Easter, everybody. And uh, see you in a few days. Bye.